on behalf of our elders, past and present, we welcome you to Quaker Lane, to Warmo Country. Warmo Protocol has been practiced for thousands of years. We have cultures and languages and respect for our region and our arts. We will share this with you and we welcome you. Kamada. Piliungi, hello. My name is Brandon Crickmore and I study classical violin at the Queensland Conservatorium of Music in Brisbane. In late July 2017, I was lucky enough to be chosen to participate in this year's global local music project to Tennant Creek for the Desert Harmony Festival. At first, details were sketchy. There's a festival in the middle of the Northern Territory. You'll be going there to participate and you will need to be adaptable to a wide range of possible situations, including playing music with local musicians, forming a band, running music workshops for local kids during the week and helping out with the festival where required. More information will follow when we hit the ground in Tenning Creek. After a fair drive from Alice Springs to Tenning Creek, we hit the ground running. Days were full on, starting at 8.30am and finishing up well into the night. It typically consisted of spending each morning at the Wananjakari Music Centre collaborating with local Aboriginal musicians and visiting artists, attending rehearsals for performances and in the afternoons from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. helping to run the music workshops. After the workshops, we attended and participated in different performances such as the Melbourne City Ballet performing A Midsummer Night's Dream, Opera Australia's Marriage of Figaro, Campfire Dreaming showcasing Indigenous artists such as Rayala and Warren H. Williams and many others. The four of us students also had opportunities to perform together on several of these afternoons for pre-show entertainment, which was widely enjoyed by many. Being able to perform with Brian and Jamison from the Wananjikari Music Centre was very special, as was performing with Ray Ella, including the late night jam with Ray back at the cabins for hours, Warren H. Williams and showing the Opera Australia Chamber Orchestra a thing or two about improvisation. We also managed to fit in a bit of time for sightseeing and cultural information sessions with Rosemary, a Warramungu elder. I would like to focus the rest of this presentation on my experience in the workshops. Barclay Regional Arts coordinated the Desert Harmony Festival and as part of the festival, Camp Harmony was created. Camp Harmony consisted of daily workshops after school for youths in areas such as dance, hip hop, circus and music around the chosen theme of dreams and dreaming. These workshops would culminate in a presentation from each group at the end of the festival. Our musical workshops were run by Daniel from Tennant Creek, myself and the three other students chosen from the university. Ben from the jazz department who played killer guitar and sax, Tian and Sophia who were both popular music students from the Gold Coast Conservatorium, fantastic singer-songwriters and multi-talented instrumentalists. My initial impression before coming to Tennant Creek was that the workshop would be the biggest challenge for me. I'd had plenty of experience playing in bands and with a range of musicians from different backgrounds before, but had never actually run a musical workshop alone or as a team. Some questions I had were, who would attend? Would anybody have prior musical experience? What equipment would we have to use? I don't think I'll be able to teach violin to a bunch of kids in a workshop with no violins, so how else can I apply the skills that I have learnt in music and at university to help facilitate an enjoyable and inspiring musical workshop for the participants? That last one was a big question. As I'd imagined, we were presented with some big challenges. The kids were shy, really shy. Most would not open up straight away. Language was a barrier for some, as many Aboriginal children do not grow up in a place where English was the first language spoken at home, and many kids spoke Aboriginal languages that were different to one another. However, all were eager to learn instruments and everything that we threw at them. They were all incredibly fast learners, and about half of the kids had no previous instrumental experience. Several of the kids lived in a government-funded hostel during school term, as their homes and families were up to a few hours away from the Tennant Creek Township, making it impractical to attend the school while living at home. The homes were managed by a rotating shift of house parents from a range of cultural and overseas backgrounds. 
The hostel didn't contain any instruments. These kids proved to be the hardest to open up, having a conversation with and to gain their trust. Initially, they showed little self-confidence and didn't smile much. It raised a few questions in my head. I had hoped that during these workshops we would have a positive impact on these kids' lives and eventually gain the kids' trust and confidence, and I feel that we accomplished great results in the short time that we were there. Within five days, the kids we worked with went from being too shy to tell us their names to being able to play 12-bar blues on piano, several chords on the ukulele, play several percussion instruments in time with the music, and open up about their hopes and dreams in life. We were able to put all of this into a song for our final performance together. The final performance was fantastic, and I feel that it was such an achievement for the kids that they will remember with confidence and happy memories. I was so proud to see the final results of the work we had put in during the week, giving the kids of the workshop an experience they won't forget. Of course, all of this would not have been possible without our team of outstanding musicians, Tian, Sophia, Ben and myself, who were able to come together in such a challenging environment and get the results we did. Bridie was an exceptional facilitator and team leader, guiding our discussions and encouraging us to strive for the results we were aiming for. Bridie, Naomi, Rosemary, the Barclay Regional Arts team and the musicians we worked with were all incredibly valuable sources of information. As each day progressed on the trip, we learnt more and more about each other, Aboriginal culture and history, music making in Tennant Creek and the different projects happening around the area encouraging the arts in the Barclay region. The more we learned, the easier the work became. It was clear on this trip that music crosses cultures and borders seamlessly and is truly a universal language. It has helped me grow as a musician, gaining a greater understanding about how wide-reaching the arts are. Even in remote communities with no formal training, there are amazing opportunities and music to experience with real stories and real people expressing themselves through music. Music is a strong part of Aboriginal culture and being able to be a part of the artist's music here in Tennant Creek has been a humbling experience. I have made new connections with the musicians here that will continue into the future beyond Tennant Creek. Also being able to speak to Raymond, Warren H. Williams and Bunnalori about their roles as respected elders in their communities and how they use music to educate and inspire young people has helped me to understand what an important role I can play for the young people of today in my musical pursuits. The trip to Tennant Creek has truly bolstered my desire to make a positive contribution in the world through my studies in music and I hope that opportunities like this continue to exist for students to gain real world experience in their field of study. Thank you and goodbye.